And the, there are components, elements. And the first one is, when we wear the helmet of salvation's forgiveness component, what does that mean? In other words, if you take out of the box and put on your helmet of salvation, what does it mean to wear the component, there are seven of them, but the first one of forgiveness? It means this. It means I behave like I really believe my debts are paid. And if I really believe my debts are paid, I never have to feel guilty about them. Have you ever noticed that the Apostle Paul could look a group in the eye in the New Testament knowing he had killed parents, moms, dads, and children, and aunts and uncles and grandparents of that crowd? He was Paul the persecutor, the murderer in the name of Christ. He persecuted to the death many believers. You know, he should have been, you know, away in one of those, uh, you know, uh, straitjackets uh, under medication. He should have been so horrifically racked with guilt for killing innocent, in fact, not just innocent, godly people, murdering them in the name of his zeal for the law and his hatred of Christ. But Paul never again had a reason to feel guilty. He said, I'm the chiefest of sinners. And he looked at the Corinthians, and you know what he said? I mean, you want to be practical? Look back at 1 Corinthians 6. Look at what this doctrine can do to people. In 1 Corinthians 6, it says, uh, and, and you flee sexual immorality. Every sin that a man does, 1 Corinthians 6, 18, is outside the body, but he commits sexual immorality. He sins against his own body. But do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you're not your own? You were bought at a price. Your body that was in sin was bought at a price, and you are a new temple of God. Now, what were they? Back up to verse 11. And such were some of you. What was the immorality they were doing? Back up to verse 9. Do you not know that, and I'm in 1 Corinthians 6, 9, that the unrighteous, the ones who are now the temple of the Spirit of God, they formerly would not inherit the kingdom of God because they were fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, homosexuals, sodomites, verse 10, thieves, covetous, drunkards, revilers. I mean, what a list. Verse 11 says, and such were some of you. How did they become temples of God? Verse 11 continues, but you were washed you were sanctified, you were justified. Hear all those doctrines, the washing of regeneration, the sanctifying work of the Spirit, the justification in the name of the Lord Jesus and by the Spirit of God. Did you catch that Paul says, if you know you're forgiven, you really believe all your debts are paid against God, all of the, that list I just read, so you never again have a reason to feel guilty. Paul said those people could say, yeah, I, I used to be a murderer. I used to be a fornicator. I used to be an adulterer. I used to be a homosexual, either the active or the passive member that both are mentioned there. But I've been washed. I've been sanctified. I've been justified. I really believe my debts are paid. So I never again have a reason to feel that I need to be guilty about that. It's a liberating thing. To, to know that you're forgiven. To know that God has removed all my debts. That's what Ephesians 1.7, if, if you uh, want to flip back to Ephesians 1.7, the, the Apostle Paul says that we have, in him we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches. What are the riches of his grace? He's removed all my debts. I never again have to feel guilty. So that's number one. That's if you're wearing the helmet of salvation, you behave like you really believe that you're forgiven and you're not guilty. By the way, if, if you see someone peddling by you that's a Christian and they are constantly racked with guilt, go like this. You need to wear that helmet because God does not produce racking, anguishing guilt. What he produces is the freedom from guilt by knowing my sins are in Christ. They're forgiven because of his payment.